Hey everyone, in today's Stories of Solar Hood series, we're going to talk with Jesse and how he put solar as a top priority in his home renovation project. Hello everyone, it's Luke Olerking here from Solar Hood, and we are starting a series here called Stories of Solar Hood, where we talk with folks in the community that have went solar and talk about their experiences. Um, and today we're here with Jesse Krupper here in the Volker, Volker neighborhood yeah. of Kansas City. Really a cool neighborhood. Um, so thanks, Jesse, for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. To start, um, one thing that I found was interesting with you is that you're renovating this whole, your house that you mm -hmm. just bought here. And it seems like from day one, uh, you had solar in mind for this house. Um, and so tell me a little bit about how that kind of became a top priority for you uh, as you renovate this house. Yeah, sure. Well, so it's it's probably before day one. Um, I've, solar's always been in my mind in our, mm -hmm. in our previous house and in previous locations. So, um, But when we got this house, which we weren't actually looking for, um, realized we were going to be doing a gut rehab, it was the first thing. Um, kind of came to the top of the list. So right. um, something that's going to pay for itself, so we might as well get it to start. And you guys kind of, you know, you're new to the neighborhood. It's, you know, I think you mentioned you saw this as a way to like say, hey, this is us, you know, yeah. welcome to the neighborhood and, and we're going solar. Right. Um, kind of a way to express your, your families. Yeah. Uh, so, so this house was kind of an eyesore when we bought it. It's been in a bad place for a long time. Uh, and that was our billboard to the neighborhood of Volker uh, saying, this is who we are. Mm -hmm. This this is uh, a message that um, we're not just going to make a change on this house and fix it up, but but we want to bring something brighter to the entire neighborhood. So yeah, cool. Um, part of our identity, I guess. Right. So I guess let's get into the technical side. Um, tell us how big your, your solar installation is. It's a 5.6 kilowatt our systems, so okay. our kilowatt system. So, um, and that should be maybe maybe eighty to ninety percent of our usage. So it'll offset between eighty to ninety percent of his electricity bill. Um, In theory. Yep. Yep. And so you kind of see how that works going forward. I mean, yeah. we've only been here a few months. Um, well, living here for a few months. Right. You've been working on it for a while. Um, so then the next question I have is, I guess, what motivated you to get into solar? What what um, you know, do you like the green aspect or do you like the savings that are going to, you know, yeah. you're going to um, see every month? Well, I'm in the field of architecture. So, um, and this is something, uh, sustainable design is actually what got me into the field. Mm -hmm. So um, I started out at the, the Coast Institute in Arizona and then University of Oregon studying sustainable design. So this is something that has been a driver and a constant in my life for the last 15, 20 years, mm -hmm. you know, so it's a, it was a, it's always been there, I guess. And this house provided the perfect opportunity. To yeah. It's got a put great, its use. great roof for it yeah. over there. Um, tell me a little bit about the experience of like the install. Um, you know, it sounds like you, I mean, with the background in architectural and design and, and engineering, you helped kind of manage the process. Um, but tell me how the install went, you know, and uh, in that whole process. Right. So, um, yeah, I'm doing everything in the house myself, mm -hmm. uh, or, or with the help of a friend. So, mm -hmm. so the friend who's an electrician has done a lot of solar install work mm -hmm. and he helped me kind of figure out the system and what was right for this house and mm -hmm. what, um, what we needed to do up there. And so we, we chose a system, we chose a, a rack and having my background in architecture, I know how to get stuff through the city, mm -hmm. uh, in theory. <laughs> right. Yeah. Simple stuff, at least. Um, and so I took care of that. He helped me figure out the system and um, the electrical side. Yeah. 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 Important and then part. we put it up. We got up on the roof and put it in ourselves. So, cool. Yeah. Um, well, it looks good. Uh, passes my inspection. Not perfect. Um, the thing I also wanted to touch on is any issues that you had. I mean, these things aren't always smooth sailing uh, yeah. you know, with any engineering project or renovation project. You always run into right. things, especially with these old houses. But tell me a little bit about any issues that you may have had throughout this process. Yeah, so the, the hardest part of the whole process was uh, the red tape, mm -hmm. um, getting it through the city. So 
made four, maybe five trips to the city. Mm -hmm. uh, the first time to figure out what they needed. Um, mm -hmm. And then this, the rest of those trips bringing in what I thought, what I interpreted as what they needed in, and then a discussion for them to tell me that it's not in fact what they wanted um, and what they were wanting was something else. So going back and forth and back and forth, uh, just trying to figure out exactly what I was trying to, to show them. So clarity on what exact documents, drawings, mm -hmm. packages you need in advance um, would be great to help streamline that process, it seems like. Definitely. And I think there's there's weird loading issues with solar mm -hmm. and there's mm -hmm. weird electrical issues with solar. So it's, uh, and it's fairly new. So mm -hmm. it's not a problem with our city in particular. It's a mm -hmm. problem with most cities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fairly new to Kansas City. It's becoming more common, but um, these issues they may not deal with day in, day out in right. the city. For exactly. Instance. Yeah. Cool. Well, we hope it's going to become more common around here. So. Yeah, um, I hope so too. So I guess one of the, probably the last question is uh, more about the future. How do you kind of see the future of renewables or solar and, and really how that ties into how communities, you know, are going to be set up going forward? So a little background on me is I'm from a small town, South Central Kansas, so I'm a little bit red and blue as it were um, and so part of part of this process and part of my love for solar is that it, it affords us the opportunity to be uh, fossil fuel independent mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so giving us a little bit more freedom on that aspect giving us a little more financial freedom mm -hmm. and then um, the environmental impacts are obviously a plus so much better yeah, yeah. yeah. so so we're saving this you know for our personal liberties but also like saving um, saving some things for our kids, mm -hmm. which we have a couple of them. So yeah. we're starting to really think about that kind yeah. of stuff. Future generations. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Making an impact. Yeah. Cool. Well, I think that's all the questions I had today. I appreciate you uh, sharing some thoughts on solar. And I mean, you got a sweet house here, sweet it, installation. It will I think be. to add to it. So, all right. Well, that's it. Uh, thanks for tuning in on today's Stories of Solarhood series. Uh, we expect more of these to be coming out. Um, but do us a favor, uh, we're calling it Tag a Friend. So if you thought this was valuable to you and you think that there are other people within your network, or your community, or your neighbors that, that may appreciate uh, Jesse's perspective on his solar installation, tag them on Twitter, share it on Facebook. Uh, pick out one person that you think would benefit and tag a friend. All right, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.